In this video, we will talk about camera models. You can be a computer vision engineer without knowing the inside workings of a camera. But to be a good one, you really need to understand what is inside the camera. We know a camera has a lens. It needs to record incoming light. So it has a sensor that records incoming light. The sensor needs to record the intensity of light coming from the scene at a particular instant of time. So it needs a shutter. The shutter opens for a small amount of time when you press the button on your camera to take a picture. How do we determine how long to open the shutter? If you open the shutter for a long time, more light hits the sensor and so you get a higher quality picture. However, if you open it for too long, all the pixels saturate and you get a white picture. The other problem with opening the shutter for too long is that you may have moving objects in the scene. The sensor will record this picture over time and so you will see a motion blur. Fortunately, the shutter speed in an SLR camera is adjustable. So if you want to photograph a landscape at night, you can set up your camera on a tripod and take a long exposure shot by opening the shutter for a long time. On the other hand, if you want to capture something moving fast like sports photography, you want to set your camera to high shutter speed. But now we do not have enough light hitting the sensor. One way to fix it is to use synchronized flash. This works well if the subject you're photographing is near the camera. But if they are far away, the flashlight may not be enough to illuminate the subject. In addition, flash produces unnatural and undesirable lighting in the scene. So if you cannot or do not want to use a flash, what options do you have? Well, in that case, to get more light, you can use another control. Behind the lens, we have an adjustable hole called the aperture. If you make the aperture size large, you get more light in and you can shoot with higher shutter speed. However, if you make the aperture size too large, the depth of field decreases because the lens no longer acts as a pinhole. It is able to focus at only one depth if you take a picture of yourself in front of the Swiss Alps. Because in that picture, the background is the whole point and your face in front of the Alps is merely evidence that you were there. So you will want to shoot with a smaller aperture. In photography, the aperture size is often expressed using an f-stop or f number or f ratio. This is the ratio of the focal length to the diameter of the aperture often expressed by f slash followed by a number. So if the focal length is 50 millimeters and the aperture size is 25 millimeters, the f number is two. You can see how f number of two corresponds to a larger aperture than f number of four. Another setting you may find on an SLR camera is called the ISO setting. Back in the day when we used films to take picture, ISO setting corresponded to the light sensitivity of the film. During the day, you could use a film with ISO setting 100 and during night, you used a film with ISO setting 400 or higher. Why not always use ISO 400 film? First, ISO 100 was much cheaper. Second, ISO 400 film was sensitive to light, but it was also sensitive to noise. So what does ISO mean in a digital camera? We do not change the sensors on a digital camera. So the ISO setting simply means a gain multiplied to the recorded image intensities. The final thing we want to cover about a digital camera is RAW versus JPEG. If you have ever used an SLR camera, you may have seen the RAW versus JPEG setting. The two images are different in a few crucial ways. RAW images are typically 16 bits per channel, while JPEG images are 8 bits per channel. Even though RAW images are using 16 bits to store the image, they may actually be only 14 bits or so. It depends on the quality of the image sensor you're using. The second thing is that JPEG images are also compressed. Typically, RAW images are either uncompressed or losslessly compressed. Raw images are also linear, while JPEG images are not. The linear raw images are not pleasant to look at because our eyes do not see the world linearly. So the raw images are converted to a nonlinear, prettier looking image using a class of algorithms called tone mapping. 
In addition, tone mapping brings down the image from 16 bits per channel to 8 bits per channel. I hope you now have a good understanding of the workings of a camera. Check out the linked resources below to explore these concepts in greater depth. That's all for this video. See you in the next video.